Our next guest uses uh, AI to determine investment strategies. The recently launched Intelligent Livermore uh, ETF holds a big position in stocks in uh, China, Chinese stocks. Joining us now is Doug Clinton, Intelligent uh, Alpha founder and CEO. Every, nothing goes straight up, straight to the heavens. You th still think China is viable at this point? Uh, not only do I think it, but our AI committee also thinks it. So obviously when we launched that ETF, LIVR, China was one of the key holdings that AI wanted to have in the portfolio. And we had about 15% or so exposure to China. We had a great run after the stimulus announcement, and now we've had this pullback kind of 10% after a 40% run. We asked AI, what do you think from here? And AI said, we think there's another 10 to 15% upside. Can I... You guarantee me this is not Gigo, garbage in, garbage out. You, you have, who developed this? Why do, why do we think that it's still not a reflection of the person that wrote the, uh, whatever it is that's generating the, the conclusions from the AI? So we use the leading large language models in the world. We use GPT, we use Gemini, we okay. use Claude. There's certain information and certain sort of prompts and instructions that we give those models. We try to keep them as unbiased as possible. And we get those models then to give us responses. So I think we've, as humans still interacting with the models, we've tried to do our job, which is prevent garbage from going in what, so what that we don't get garbage What data are you providing out. it, though? We provide it various data. Some of it's economic data, broadly okay. available. Some of it is earnings data, historicals from companies. And then we also use the models to actually make projections like analysts, like humans might do, right. and say, what do you think is going to happen in the future? We use that as an input as well. Doug, but, do you correct just? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Do you correct just the stuff going in, or do you correct some of it coming out and say, "Ah, oh, we believe this part of it, but not this part too"? We try not to do the latter because I think the superpower of AI is really avoiding human bias. And if we start making our own judgments on what AI is saying, then it's more human augmented analysis rather than AI powered analysis. I, I want to go to what you're tr what it's training on. So you're effectively providing it how much data um, on a relative basis to obviously the, pub, the public stuff it's, it's trained on online? Um, it's hard to quantify. I mean, you can think of it as depending on what the use case is. So let's say we're evaluating a set of large cap U.S. stocks. We'd have 500 stocks and we might have, you know, several hundred rows of different data. If you think about it like a spreadsheet. So it's a significant amount of data. It's probably not as much data as traditional machine learning model approaches might use, but we're trying to also pull in the intelligence, the base intelligence of these large language models as well with that data. No, no, but so, are you, so you're taking all the earnings reports for the last, how long? Oh, earnings reports? Let's, uh, let's say you're you, doing you, earnings you, reports. So let's talk about, so I, I'm curious sort of how yeah. you're, I mean, I think there's a lot of folks who are trying to figure out how to use AI in the yeah. way you are. So that's what I'm trying to understand, what you're doing. Yeah, we might go back several years. I would okay. put it that way. I want to give away all the secret sauce. But it's several years of data uh, of those earnings reports and those historical estimates. And then we would pull in consensus forward estimates as well. Would you put in analyst reports? We've experimented with that. We don't currently do that. But that's something I think in the future we'd like to use more. And something else we'd like to do in the future is also have these models talk to human experts, do channel right. checks. Would you put transcripts from uh, interviews or from uh, Conference, conference calls? We do use those. We use transcripts. We use, you know, TV appearances even from CEOs would you, would of companies. Would you use the yeah. analyst calls as a contrary or, or a coincident? Uh, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. It might depend on the analyst. And it might depend on how the well, AI I perceives. It, I don't think it depends on the analyst. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, how the AI perceives how great that analyst has been in the past. Do you do, like, what would AI say about interest rates in the Fed? Right now, are they on the right track? I, I would, I would trust AI. I think more than than someone flying by the seat of their pants. I, I mean, the, the, I just think looking ahead, I, I don't think the Fed's very good at, at anticipating things. I think they're more reactive, and it's gotten them into trouble in the past. I don't know if where they're getting in more trouble right now or not. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. But we're in this initially in this mess from staying at zero for too long. And any AI program would have said, "Get the hell off the the, move the snide." Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, you know, Becky, I think, mentioned to Steve in, in the last segment, could the Fed pause here? 
And AI, we do ask them about macro you do? factors. They say pause. AI thinks there's a greater chance of pausing than I think the market thinks. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's so, interesting. That's something we can actually come and check in the next six weeks. Of course. We'll What's core? As, as of yesterday, it was core CPI still above three, wasn't it? Right. It was 2.9 percent year over year, I think. I think. Was it? I'm not 100 percent sure, but I, that's a, I think that's the number. It's I not. Down. It's so that would be 50 percent too high from what they want. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.